Hello again and welcome to another week of Daily Bible Study. We're going to take today and tomorrow and finish up Paul's letter to the Ephesians, and then we're going to move on to the letter to the Hebrews. Before we do that, let's pray. Uh, loving God, we thank you uh, that you have put us in our places. And Lord, even as we are in our places, we also know and we rejoice in the fact that you have uh, affected the structures of this world. Lord, help us to evermore participate in the transformation of the world so that the world as we live it here on earth may be as you would have it be in heaven. Lord, we ask you to be with us during this time, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, we're going to continue on with uh, Paul's, uh, which is chapter 6, verse, starting with verse 1. And we were talking at the very end of last week about this issue of marriage uh, between husbands and wives. And specifically, uh, we talked about how um, you know, this idea of marriage, the way Paul talks about marriage, uh, actually tends to undermine the kind of patriarchal and sexist views of marriage that have sometimes been in effect over the years. Talking about things like uh, why it's, culture has treated it so much more serious if a woman commits adultery than if a man commits adultery, whereas Paul's talk about marriage is actually more serious if a man commits adultery because the man is meant to be uh, imaging Christ in the relationship. Uh, so he goes on, and now we're going to talk about uh, children and parents and, and also another relationship that becomes something of a hot topic. So Paul writes, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so you may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up uh, in dis- the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Slaves, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in the sincerity of your heart as to Christ. Not by way of uh, eye service as men pleasers, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, render service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatever good thing each one does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether slave or free. And masters, do the same things to them, and give up threatening, knowing that both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no partiality with him. So, first of all, with the children and uh, parents thing, uh, Paul does point out the fact that uh, out of all of the commandments, the first one listed that has, do this, and here's the result, is actually this command to obey, to honor your mother and father. I think it's really important to realize that. Um, and so he's, it's this idea of when obeying parents, it's not really even obeying parents, it's, it's this participating in the obedience uh, of following God. But I also want to point out this, the, the, the really kind of radical thing that's going on here is Paul's advice to slaves and slave owners. Because the fact of the, fact of the matter is, if you were to only look at what does the Bible say and divide up into two people or whatever and say, um, you know, one person or one side needs to defend the institution of American slavery, and one has to try to dismantle it, and you have to look to the Bible as your primary source, you can find more texts, or you can find very few texts that that where Paul says slavery is inherently an evil that must be eliminated. You get a lot more about how does one go about owning slaves? How does one go about the practice of slavery? And so it's not a coincidence that in the big divide in American culture over slavery, the pro-slavery party tended to quote the Bible a lot. And whereas those who were abolitionists uh, tended to also want to quote the Bible, but they quoted very different things, things that were not necessarily about slavery as such, but were effectively related to things, things like there is no Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, like we see in Paul's letter to the Galatians. So here we have an example where Paul is giving slaves, Christian slaves, advice. And he tells them, essentially... Um, don't 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 um, be a bad slave. Be the best slave you can be, and don't just do it so you can look as though you're doing the you know that doing the obedient thing. Really, really do it as if the Lord you're serving is your master. <laughs> and that, to many people, is is, uh, is is an example. And we have to come to terms with the fact that there are people in the world who take passages like that and say Paul would not have opposed American slavery. Would have told the slaves to just get with the program and be really good slaves, and conclude that there is no moral standing for the Bible because slavery is obviously wrong, especially in the particularly brutal form that took place in America. Now, I have a dear friend of mine, or well, a dear academic friend of mine, which means we shared an office with each other and we correspond from time to time. Um, and uh, named Esau Macaulay, and he wrote uh, Christianity Today's book of the year called Reading While Black, and one of the things he talks about in his writing, because he himself is an African-American Anglican, uh, he talks about the um, importance of realizing that the what Paul does say about slavery is actually radical. And I think it's important to realize uh, that this is not drawing at Esau as such right now, although I'm sure he says some similar things, but the thing is what Paul has said, we have to realize that uh, Paul has said, you, know, you slaves, you should treat your slave owners like brothers in the Lord. But he also tells the slave owners, he says, do the same things to them. 
Give up threatening, knowing that both their master and yours is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. And that is a crucially important observation because what Paul is saying is the slave-slave owner relationship needs to become so radically transformed that it looks like it, like the relationship does between Christians. And you're not beating Christians. You're not threatening. You know, ideally, Christians ought not to be beating each other, ought not to be threatening each other, ought to be serving one another. And so in order for the slave owner to really do what Paul has is giving advice here, it is going to so fundamentally change the relationship between the, slave, the, the master and the slave that it's as if there is no more slavery anymore. It's like the idea of, you know, again, we're talking about husbands and wives. You know, husbands are called to love the wives, love their wives as Christ loved the church. And Christ gave himself for the church and submitted himself to be vile and to be used poorly uh, so that he could save the church. And so by doing that, um, if, if husbands do what Paul says, it so radically undermines any kind of pathological patriarchy that actually it produces a radical equality uh, inside of a marriage relationship. In the same way, if slave owners follow Paul's commands here, if we want to point to this passage, if someone who's pro-slavery wants to point to this passage, says, okay, if you have slavery that is every bit as fully transformed as Paul talks about, then you know what? I wouldn't even mind being a slave in that. The fact of the matter, though, is once you've done what Paul says to do as a slave owner, you don't have slavery in any sense that we had it in America. It radically stands against it. Um, So I think that it's important to realize that exactly in some of these places where it seems as though Paul could lose some of his moral authority in a 21st century context. I think we view it in a way that makes sense in the way his context, we realize that actually he does more to undermine uh, slavery and undermine the evils of slavery than, than we may have thought. Um, I know that, you know, if I, the fact of the matter is I mentioned my friend Esau, uh, he, will, he always has written more eloquently on a variety of topics than I ever will, and he does a fantastic job. So I encourage you to, if you want his book, Reading While Black, actually is written um, as an evangelical African-American Anglican, uh, and it is a fascinating book, and it really does help to understand, from my point of view as a white evangelical, uh, what has happened over the years and what baggage the texts have carried, and it helped to enc- helps to encourage me uh, to be a better uh, witness for the gospel in any context. Uh, but that's uh, it's one of these great examples of Paul doing so much more than he seems at the service level. Well, c- that's all I have for today. Come back in tomorrow. We will read our last passage here in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Have a good day.